Welcome back there students. Uh, this will be a hastily recorded video, which is why you're going to have to do some mouse watching. See that mouse moving around there? There it goes, right by Spark. There it is, big old mouse. Uh, make sure you watch that for any kind of pointing at the screen, because as you can see, I'm confined to this little box and not standing in front of a screen. Why, you ask? Because that's the reason. So today, uh, this will be part two for energy in uh, chemical bonding. We're gonna talk about why it is that we need the spark to start the fire. Uh, for anyone that doesn't know that song reference, get on my level. Clearly, uh, you should not have should not be on this video if you've not yet done the graphing assignment. You should have at least one graph that looks like this one here on the left, at least one graph that looks like this one on here on the right. Go ahead and get those out because we're gonna look at them a little bit. So you'll notice that the graph on the left here, we've got a lot more energy in the reactants than we do in the product. So as you can see uh, over there, haha, <laughs> mirror image, how fun. As you see over there, it says on the screen, less energy in the products, more energy in the reactants. So you gotta ask yourself, was energy pulled in or is energy released out to the environment? And the answer is, uh, it was released. You have less energy. Where did that energy go? Well, it had to go somewhere so it was released from the system here which is the chemicals the hydrogen the oxygen and the water it was released into the environment wherever the environment is keep in mind that this chemical reaction right here this is the one you saw with bill nye and the balloon so the energy was released from the balloon out into uh the room that that Bill Nye was in. Over here on this one, you'll notice we have a lot more energy in the products than we do in the reactants. See, look at that. I mean, you, you, we don't even need to really look at you see, that bar is bigger, okay? So the bigger bar, more energy. As a result, this one is the opposite. This is endothermic. We had to take energy from the surroundings. So energy was taken from the surroundings, pulled in into the products as they were formed. You'll notice that uh, this has to do with bonding. So uh, energy and reactions is all about bonding. That's the first blank in the next set of notes in case you, you missed that. All about that bonding, about that bonding, bonding, bonding. All about that bonding, about that bonding. Oh, okay, okay. The reason why it's about the bonding is because of this thing called activation energy. So we have to reach what is called an activation energy to break the initial bonds or to orient molecules properly so that they'll uh, bump into each other in a way that breaks those initial bonds. That's called the activation energy. There's your next set of links. And activation energy is required to break initial bonds or to orient molecules properly so the bonds can start to break. So now we're on to the next one. Uh, the reason why uh, they, we have to apply that energy or orient molecules properly is so that their valence electrons, those outermost shell electrons, will be able to interact. Remember, those valence electrons interacting, that is uh, how we have chemical reactions happening. That's how bonds break. That's how bonds form. Remember, anytime that we're building bonds, we're going to be releasing energy out into the environment. So building bonds releases energy. Any uh, reaction that's making more bonds than breaking, that is called an exothermic reaction. We are making more bonds than what we're breaking overall. So it tends to be uh, when you're making a lot of little tiny products. So you've got like a big molecule, you can break a few bonds and you're gonna make a whole bunch of bonds in the product, a bunch of little stuff. That's gonna release a bunch of energy. That's generally how an exothermic reaction tends to look. Anytime that you're breaking bonds, that's requiring energy to be stored in the products. You can't really store energy, but you're taking energy is required to right, to break those bonds. It takes energy to get in there and break something. And as a result, the energy is taken from the environment and we can think of it as being stored in the products. When you take chemistry and physics, you'll learn more about how the energy deal really works. But until then, uh, just go with me here. But anytime you have a reaction that is breaking more bonds than they are making, that is called an endothermic reaction, right? Energy is going in to break those bonds. So overall, that would be an endothermic reaction. Here is an example using the snatums. Woo! Yeah, these things are kind of neat. And for anyone who's wondering why uh, there's an X right here, that is because there's like a glare in this area. It might be kind of hard to see on the video. So uh, if we, ha we have a couple molecules here. We have a hydrogen, right? A hydrogen molecule, which is just two hydrogens bonded together. Here they are. How exciting. Over here, we've got methane, which is CH4. Notice we've got one 
carbon, yes, one carbon, and then we've got one, two, three, four hydrogens. You'll notice so if I get it close over here, it starts messing with the hydrogen, right? These have magnets in them, but they model and simulate what happens with actual molecules. Get back here pretty well because of the magnets. And then over here we have a we have a halogen, we have a chlorine gas. Chlorine gas, a super toxic, very bad for you. No touchy, but uh, we can touch this because it's not really chlorine, it's just two green things together. You'll notice that because they are bonded together, right? If I want to break this bond here, I have to actually take the chlorine, I have to exert energy to pull them apart, right? You'll notice that they kind of want to come back together and listen closely. Here they snap together. Remember when you make a bond, you are releasing energy, and we can actually hear that energy in the form of the snap with the snatums. That's why they're called snatums here, just for hydrogen. Mmm. Hear that? Very gratifying. All right, and then same thing with the methane, right? We got carbon very big, and it just, these elements, they want, well, they don't really want, but you can think of them as wanting to form this bond, right? So we take our methane here. You'll notice. I have to put in some energy to get this off. It doesn't just come off on its own. I have to apply some energy. And it's got to be enough energy to actually separate it enough to stop that bond from just reforming. That is why we have the activation energy that's needed to start a chemical reaction. So if we look at this reaction in terms of bonding, you'll notice that because we have energy over here on the side of the reactants instead of the side of the products, you'll notice that that energy is being used to attack these bonds. It's going to break those bonds, so we separate the carbons, we separate the hydrogens, and as a result, we're going to build up a larger molecule, right? We're going to build up a larger molecule. So we have to put more energy in because we're breaking more of these bonds. Also worth mentioning, it's because we are going to have to have six CO2s and six waters to make this one glucose and six oxygens over here. So now it's balanced, so it makes me happier. It takes a lot of energy to break all those little tiny bonds apart, just like uh, you just saw with the snatums. So this would be an example of an endothermic reaction. Again, it's endothermic because we have to break a bunch of bonds at the start. If we had an exothermic reaction, like the exact opposite of this process, that would be uh, doing the opposite, where we're going to be making a lot of bonds in the end. So remember, think about bonding when you're thinking about chemical energy in reactions. So now we have a few more terms just to flesh out the, the final part of these notes. Again, remember, we're focused on bonding here. So keep in mind that uh, every reaction requires at least some energy to start. Sometimes there's enough energy just present in the environment or present in the molecules that as soon as we put them in water, as soon as they're touching each other, uh, they'll react. So highly reactive molecules have a lower energy to get that started. But it's important to know that most chemical reactions don't just happen on their own. We need energy to activate the substances so that they will react. And that energy is called the activation energy. So in your notes here, in the bottom part, you should now have uh, reactions do not just happen on their own they require energy to start activation energy is the energy required for a reaction to occur this activation energy must be added to the reactants we usually add it in the form of thermal energy very easy way to make things react turn up the heat it's actually what your body's doing when you have a fever because we're going to be using heat transfer the heat will transfer from the environment into the molecules and make them move fast enough that they'll be able to react that, boys and girls, is everything you need to know about bonding and chemical reactions. Next up will be these after another short activity. Thanks for watching.